Hello everyone. Today's video is about a data enrichment use case implemented using DMN and other open standard. The typical pattern for this use case is when you have as input provided a complex data structure with several attributes. And now based on the result of some computation, some decisions, you want to enrich the original data structure that you have as an input with additional attributes and their values. An even more complex use case pattern is when you have this data structure and what you want to do is that you want to overwrite the values on some attributes based on the computation that you have done with say a DMN decision model. It's important to realize that we cannot speak and in fact we will never speak about mutability in the context of DMN. This is because all decision logic is free of side effect. This is a mandatory requirement from the DMN specification. We respect that and also there are other either important and deterministic requirements which we must comply with. It's also very important to realize that we don't strictly need mutability in order to perform a data enrichment use case. In fact, today what we will do is that we are going to borrow some lesson learned from functional programming and we will boil it down in a simple way in order to implement a data enrichment use case using DMN as standalone or using DMN combined with a BPMN process definition. Let's move now to the demo. The running example for today's demo is that uh, we want to evaluate the priority of a support request coming to our system. So what you see here on the left is the item definition where I define the complex data structure that represent our support request. As you can imagine, it contains an account identifier along with some, uh, some other several attributes. And what we want to determine is the priority of this uh, support request. On the right hand side, uh, you see a realization using a Java Pojo. This is to comply with the rules, the BPM, key v7 items, and uh, all the attributes except of priority are part of the almost all argument constructor. This will come helpful later as part of the demo. Let's now go further with our running example of managing the support request using BPMN and DMN using version 1.3. So in a process definition, I have my support request and what I want to do is to manage in order to determine the priority. So in the process task, I will have a reference to the decision model that will determine the priority. So nothing uh, too fancy here. We will have in our DMN model, the support request input data is using that uh, complex structure. And what we want to do is that we have a simple decision of course, here is going to be very simple for the purpose of uh, today's demo, is that based on the attribute uh, premium valorization, which can be a Boolean that uh, the customer account has paid for a premium, then in the case of premium, the priority will be valorized as high. If the premium was not paid, then the priority will just be standard medium. Now, what we want to do here in the BPMN uh, process file is that uh, here we will have uh, what we would expect uh, on the input. We are giving the valorization for the support request. So to remember the decision requirement uh, diagram, here we are sending from the process to the support request input data. And as output, we will get the determine a priority we will store it in a temporary process variable of the BPMN called, uh, which not my fantasy, priority. Now what we are, have left to do is that we need to take the incoming original support request and overwrite the priority value. So e there are several ways to do that with classic BPMN. In this case, we have a simple script that will update the value. So basically what is happening here are two things. First of all, from the process task, we are invoking the decision model and we are getting back the values of the priority alone. Also, we manage and in BPMN, we have a concept of mutability, which we don't have in DMN. And now we can mutate the process variable that we called, uh, in this case, uh, request. So the process variable request, which is that uh, support request, we can set uh, the 
its uh, priority to the values that is coming from that decision. Now back uh, in the gateway, as usual, we will have that uh, in the case the priority is high, it will go through some paging or otherwise it will follow the standard process. This is implemented using classic DMN. Now we can do something more. These are now are a pair of BPMN and DMN models that will uh, borrow the lesson from functional programming and we will take it a step further. So in fact, as you see, the process and the DMN models look very similar, albeit with a little difference. So let's start again from the BPMN process. As a first task, we want to invoke the DMN model. What uh, we are passing in is the support request. As you can see here, it's almost identical, but now we have an additional decision. Let's see what is uh, doing this specific decision. As you can see here, this is a uh, invoking a specific function that we call the context put. We set it with uh, uh, three parameters, the original support request, which is part of our DRG input data. So that is one here. And uh, we give it priority as an attribute and uh, a value, the determined priority. The determined priority is the decision table that we've learned in the previous step. So what uh, these are, uh, DMN decision logic is doing is that uh, it will actually provide the data enrichment for my support request. So we can see it as well in the types. If we go to the process request, here you can see that it will conform to the support request. Let's see now what this difference make, how it does simplify on the process side. In fact, here, we have it that the support request is still giving as input the support request for the DRG input. As you can see represented here. And uh, as output, we get the process request decision node. So in fact, as you see in this case, what uh, this uh, task will do as a net effect is that uh, the request process variable will be substituted with the process request. It's important to realize here what is happening. We are not changing the, in DMN, the value of the incoming support request. What in fact we are doing, you can think here that you have almost a clone of the original support request, except that the priority attribute has now been valorized according to the decision made in the decision table. And this actually, from the process point of view, is doing exactly what you want. What you want in the process side is that you want the request process variable now to be pointing to the support request, which have the priority val value valorized. And in fact, uh, the remainder of the process is going to be the same without any changes. This is important because now we have simplified both the process and the DMN to actually implement the use cases that uh, we wanted to do. We can see that as well from a testing point of view. So here are some tests implemented on top of Drools, JBPM and KV7 projects. So let's run the first test using the first example model and let's see what it does. As we can see in the uh, original classic DMN model, we are providing as input a support request, which uh, as you will see, it doesn't contain the priority value valorized. This is because as we remember, the almost all, all argument constructor of support request does not contain the assignment for priority. And in fact, uh, what you have here is the premium value. So because uh, in this case, uh, this uh, customer John Doe has not uh, paid for a premium, we know from the decision table that uh, the determined priority will be valorized as medium. This is the DMN model that uh, is used from a process point of view in order to take this value and set it to a process variable that is held by the BPMN process and to set this value to the priority attribute. 
Now let's see the one using uh, the functional programming approach. So I run the test and uh, this is running this decision model instead. So as we can see, we are providing the same uh, input request. It's here you can see that uh, the constructor call is the same, except that now as part of the output, we have uh, two decisions. The determine priority exactly as before, but now as well from an external observer point of view, we have uh, the uh, support request that was coming as input with the now the priority valorized. In fact, uh, what we can do is that uh, if I comment out this assertion in order not to make the test fail, and I change this to yes, I paid for a premium, and I run the test again, We notice that, uh, so as we are expecting, we are setting as input uh, somebody uh, account John Doe that has paid for a premium. The calculation for determining priority is now high. And as part of the decision output, we have the support request containing exactly the same values with also the priority attributes now valorized as high. And this is very convenient because now we have done it uh, as part of a decision model that is uh, self-encapsulated, but also we can use uh, these, the properties that uh, as part of a decision, we have the data enriched of my incoming request and to use it as a substitution for the process variable in my BPMN process. So this is just to recap, is using a specific function that uh, takes the original data structure that uh, you want to almost clone or copy from. We have the attributes that uh, you want to change its value, in this case, its priority, and the value that you want to set it with. In this case, of course, is coming from the sub-decision. There are, of course, other uh, type of uh, extended functions that can help with these kind of uh, use cases. I will have a blog post down below that goes into more detail. This video was mainly to introduce to the concept and to give an overview about what you can do with this type of uh, functions and built-in functions of DMN and how you don't really need strictly mutability in order to actually realize in a very effective way a data enrichment use case. Now, if you find this uh, video helpful, of course, you know the drill. It will be really helpful if you could uh, subscribe to this channel, leave a like down below, comment, share it. Please let us let me know because this is a, a very important feedback in order to make more videos like this one. As mentioned in the blog down, post down below, there are going to be many more details and how these uh, con uh, more extended functions may be part of upcoming DMN specification version. And of course, we will support it. With that, I thank you for your attention.